because yeah, me and Anna are right next to each other. So you're competing. <laughs> yeah. Hi everybody, just checking in. Is, is there some clarity on on just having a quick look at that uh, that matrix? I don't know how to correct it. Um, I think so. Okay. Have some fun. Just in, just enjoy the the process. Um, you know, just sort of have some fun on where it works for you. Okay. Thank you. all about engagement. Mm -hmm. Engagement's good. Yeah, and for me, it fluctuates. I mean, I think I like the visualization of the chart because there are days and maybe it's that I'm super tired and I didn't get a good night's sleep. I'm less engaged. So I the you know, if you're experiencing burnout or, you know, if the company that you work for, hi Ryan, um, you know, is able to like give you like the tools and the resources that you need. And if you're not given that support, sometimes that also affects your, you know, your performance. Oh yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. And, and as we were saying, maybe not going the way that they could be and how to find solutions and and then getting people in a room to communicate and solve problems and move the needle forward. And, and so that to me, when we've got team members who are doing that and being proactive, that's a sign that they're in that more player zone and, the, and they're playing hard. But then when you've got, I mean, you, you were just pointing it out a second ago, you've got the team members Um, I would say that that's, that's a, like a, hi. Hi, Ryan. Hi, guys. A, a three, like, playing, um, like, fan. Right. Like, like, you're so, like, like you're showing up, but you, you just don't. Water. Yeah. You no, know, Ryan, like you had said, you know, turn your, turn your have tos into want tos. Mm. I think somebody on the low fan player spectrum would have more have tos and somebody on the higher spectrum would have more want to mm -hmm. where Love that connection. I'm in, in this. And then somebody on the, uh, on the X axis there, uh, I think education would go a long ways uh, between playing soft and playing hard. I found um, in situations where I have not given it my all is because I don't feel confident in knowing um, the process or like, I, I think about selling insurance before I worked here. Um, nobody trained me on how to do it. They just said, okay, go do it. And yeah. so I was so scared of failing that uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, push myself further because I didn't, there was so much I didn't know. That's good. Kelsey, what, what, would you agree with that? I would, yeah. Um... You know, Mark, when we came into the breakout room, was asking, "What does a what does a three eight look like?" So a fan and like a fan, but someone who works really hard. Cool. Um, and and like I, I know you said not to make it personal, but like it, this the, the example that I have was very personal. You know, I was a, a leader in a hotel, mm. um, and in a culture that was very much blame focused. Like for me, my experience in hotels is you get the score and if the score isn't what you wanted, whose fault is it, <laughs> right? right. Like that's, uh, that's the conversation. Yeah, so there's yes. always pointing fingers. Mm -hmm. And you know, like it always makes me think, my grandfather always used to say, you know, you point your finger at me, but there's three fingers pointing back at you, right? right. So like, but people forget that forget to take ownership of the whole thing right so for me like an, an eight is you show up and you try and you try and you try and you want to do the best that you can and you work really hard but the three the three part of it is, is you don't have the resources the culture is not there so you don't really want to show up and invest 
yes. and get blamed for it yeah. and fail. You know, like I, I read a book called um, Adaptation. It's by Tim Harford, who's an economist, and it's all mm. about um, all of these big companies that failed and learned from their failure and then grew, mm. um, which is a great mindset to have, right? But mm. if you're not in that culture, <laughs> it's very hard to progress above a three. It's really good. So one more minute, you guys, and, and uh, bring some of this back to the big group, okay? Thank you. So, yeah, it's really good. I'll be right back. Somebody who, like, say you're in the middle of a football game, halftime or whatever, and your ability to There's my team. Awesome. Just waiting for everybody to come back. There we go. Good, good. So just a quick report in. Uh, so uh, uh, Kelsey, yes. uh, give us just a thought that you had. You guys were talking, you talked a little bit about your experience in hotels. Just give us that idea. Yeah, so Mark asked, what does a 3-8 look like, where it's a 3 for the fan, but an 8 for um, the, the working hard. And for me, I particularly related to it where if you work, as I did, in a hotel setting, um, where the whole goal is to get that 10 and get that score, um, the culture of a hotel is naturally, if you don't get the 10, what 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 went wrong, how did it go wrong, and who did it? Who's taking ownership for it? So it's a very much a culture of blame, mm. no matter what. Um, and so, you know, like I'd show up to work every day and work really, really hard and try and get everything that I needed to get done and inspire the team and, you know, get us that 10. But at the end of the day, you know, the blame game was there. So that made it a three. I didn't want to go to work because I felt like I was failing every day. Right. And, um, and so that I worked really hard as an eight, but caught like phoned it in as a three. So thank you so much. That was yeah. example. That was a great conversation that, uh, that you both had that, uh, you and Mark had and, and Lori, I, I, I sort of caught one part that you guys were, you guys were talking about, is that this is a little bit more intricate than maybe just engagement, but it has that feel. Uh, what did you guys talk about there? Jordan or Morgan, do you want to contribute since I kind of talked last time or? I'll go. Sure. Doesn't I, I can jump in. Um, go for it. So one of the things we kind of discussed is uh, the different times that you might be at a different level in terms of 
um, okay, well, maybe you don't know as much about this specific situation at this time. Maybe you are going to be played a little bit softer because you're more of absorbing the information and other people with more experiences can bring about more, um, more movement towards the goal or something like that. Or maybe it's something that you really need to move, uh, like be a more of an aggressive player at that specific situation at that time. So it, we were trying to kind of like think of like frameworks around that part. Nice. Thank you, Jordan. Morgan, was there a, a thought there that you want to piggyback on? Yeah, it, it really, it really is about recognizing that it's well. One thing I want to point out is we can't be top level players. We can't be playing hard all the time. And sometimes we're going to make mistakes. And it's important to take a moment to recognize that, dust ourselves off, and pick ourselves back and be the player we know we can be. Yeah. Um, ideally, you no. Know, even if we're playing soft, we're still in that player mentality. And at some time, at some point, playing soft is probably the right choice to make. You know, we're talking. Lori, Lori mentioned that that what you said it directly applies to our business that sometimes investing is playing to not lose. Yes. And, and it's, it's okay to do that if that's the conscious choice. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. I, I, I try to say that often, you know, uh, there's, there's times when we've won Stanley cups and, and, you know, got through rounds in the playoffs where uh, we're up by a goal and we're not trying to get another goal. <laughs> right. Like we're locking it down. And so we're actually playing not to lose. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I think that's a lot of people I talk to say, Oh, you shouldn't do that. You should just play to win the whole time. Well, that's not my experience. Now, do we always want to play not to lose? <laughs> Probably not. Right. Like, yeah, for sure. Alan, what did you guys connect around? What were some of the key takeaways there that you talked about? Uh, we talked about, um, for the most part, um, everyone had been either at one end of the spectrum or the other. Wow. Um, and it depended uh, a lot on, as roles changed in the place where we were working, how um, you start off with one, one feeling about how things are going and as time progresses, things changed and um, your attitude basically changed and you became a different a different kind of play. Really good. Thank you for that. 